Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let thy merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of thy humble servants, that they may obtain their, their petitions, make them ask such things as please thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who has taken to thyself the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of thine incarnate Son, grant that we, who have been redeemed by his blood, may share with her the glory of thine eternal kingdom. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The epistle is written in the twelfth chapter of the first epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians beginning at the first verse. Concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye are Gentiles, carried away unto those dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gift, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another the first kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. Here endeth the epistle. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ from the 19th chapter of St. Luke, beginning with the 41st verse. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace. But now they are hid from thine eyes, for the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee around, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. And he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple. The Gospel of our Lord. I believe. 
believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, the very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and Apostolic Church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The scripture readings for today deal with the issue of sin in a very discomforting way. Sin is much more interesting in the abstract than the personal. And today's readings deal uh, compel us to confront sin, uh, sin up close and personal. And they compel us to examine our own sins, not the sins committed by other people. Moreover, they confront us with the fact that all sins, large and small, have consequences, and that even sins we consider minor have, can have very much more serious consequences than anything we can expect. One of today's uh, Old Testament lessons deals with sin as a, a root cause of the total destruction of the nation-state, and I guess that, socially speaking, is about as serious as you can get. It re records how the prophet Jeremiah foretold the destruction of uh, the land of Judah by the Babylonians in the 6th century BC. And Jesus gives us the same uh, uh, message in today's communion gospel, echoing Jeremiah when he foretells the siege of Jerusalem and its destruction by the Roman military some 40 years after the crucifixion. Judah in Jeremiah's day was quite different from Judea in Jesus' day. Judah was a free country, and its government could, was doing all it could to eradicate foreign influence from political life. Judea in the first century AD was an occupied country, a tiny part of Rome's the, uh, vast empire. While its leaders would dearly have liked to rid themselves of foreign influence in, in the nation's affairs, such notions were totally impractical. In fact, they were positively suicidal. Judah in Jeremiah's day was religiously uniform and in terms of Jewishness. Most people were re reasonably observant, and few questioned the notion that the nation had a special relationship with God. Judea in the first century AD, by contrast, was a secular state. Many Jews took their religion very seriously, such as the Pharisees and Sadducees, but many others were apostate and lived as Greeks and Romans. Jeremiah was one of the most unsuccessful of all the prophets, and it's not difficult to understand why. He addressed the people of Judah as though they were the biggest bunch of idiots and heretics and apostates who ever lived. He sounded absolutely puffed up with self-importance. Listen. Thus saith the Lord, Stand in the court of the Lord's house, and speak unto all the cities of Judah which come to worship in the Lord's house. Diminish not a word. If so be they turn from their, uh, every man from his evil way, I may repent the evil that I propose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings. Pretty tough stuff. But the people of Judah didn't see themselves that way. They were deeply insulted by being branded apostates. They thought they were pretty good churchgoers. They regularly worshipped in the temple. They observed feasts, the feasts and fasts and holy days. They tithed rigorously, not just their incomes, but everything they had. And they were fed up to the back teeth with a self-righteous idiot telling them that they were terrible people. 
But good churchgoers or not, Jeremiah turned out to be right on the money. In 586 BC, the Babylonian army attacked Jerusalem. The temple was destroyed, the holy city was wiped off the map, and the people of Judah were uprooted from their homes and carried away into exile. Similarly, in AD 70, the population of Jerusalem, virtually all of them practicing Jews, were slaughtered or enslaved by the conquering Roman army. The problem is that people who are good churchgoers aren't necessarily good Christians, or in this case, good Jews. Just because you go to church doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing God's will. In 586, the people of Judah thought they were worshipping God, but in fact they were flagrantly disobeying Him. They had brought pagan gods into the temple, Canaanite fertility deities, the Assyrian sun god and moon goddess, all strictly contrary to the law of Moses. But they rationalised their way out of their, their theological difficulties, with the same cultural excuses that we ourselves use today. They were celebrating diversity, the pagan gods with different faces of the one true God. The faces of God, however, were entirely different from the face of God we encounter in the Bible, a just and loving creator of heaven and earth and all that therein is. Moloch, the Phoenician fire god, demanded human sacrifice. Priestesses of, of Astarte or Astaroth, the Canaanite moon goddess, were in fact prostitutes and Baal was worshipped in drunken orgies. Jeremiah denounced what they were doing. He warned the people that violence begets violence, killing begets killing, and immorality begets immorality. They would bring disaster on themselves, he warned. But they laughed at him and said he was just a crazed fundamentalist. These people weren't ignorant of the scriptures. So how, how can they have thought their motivations pleased God? Well, they think, as many of us think, that the scriptures were cultural documents. Moses' laws were just fine for runaway slaves in the wilderness, but much too primitive for a sophisticated modern nation. It wasn't until Jerusalem was a pile of smoking rubble that they began to understand that God intended his commandments to be taken very seriously including that culturally very difficult one. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, and visit the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. This doesn't mean that God gets jealous if like a jilted lover if we don't worship him. He knows that if we aren't worship, worshipping him, the source of all good, we're probably worshipping something else, the source of all evil. When, when he says, says he visits the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation, he's explaining how the world works. He is telling us the, uh, that sin has inevitable consequences. While he's always ready to forgive, he can't help us to escape the inevitable consequences of our sin without uh, depriving us of the very essence of our humanity. And that's our freedom of will. God has not given us his laws to make our lives difficult. But because he created us, he knows what makes us work best. His laws are designed to keep us out of trouble. If we ignore them, we shouldn't be, really be surprised when things go wrong. But every time we let him down, every time we fail him, he's there ready to forgive us for our mistakes, mistakes that we've made. All we have to do is ask his forgiveness, and he's always there for the asking. Amen. To the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Christ Church militant here on earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblations, and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they who confess thy holy name 
may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, and especially Donald our President and Lawrence our Governor, that they may truly and impartially administer justice for the punishment of wickedness and vice, and for the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant John, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those whom we mention in the secrecy of our hearts. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departing this life from thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins unto all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ hath unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee o lord holy father almighty everlasting god to our lord jesus christ who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life therefore with angels and archangels 
and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, who is high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these, thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the same night that he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to his supper. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bless thee, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Saviour Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire the fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy for our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, for honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us join together in singing the glory of the excelsis. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee. We bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of God. Let 
us pray. O oh Lord, support us all the day long, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in thy mercy grant us a safe lodging, and a holy rest, and peace at the last. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.